What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is Mabo Day. Um, and as such, we're going to uh, have a bit of a read about um, what exactly that is um, and what it sort of means for um, the indigenous people of Australia. So, we've got an ABC article here um, that was posted early this morning. Um, so let's fly, let's uh, dive into it. For more than 200 years, the Australian government acted under the presumption that Australia belonged to no one before colonization. Um, which obviously was completely wrong. Um, that legal concept known as terra nullius um, basically stripped Aboriginal people uh, and Torres Strait Islander people um, of their traditional rights to their lands and attempted to sever connections to cultures that date back 65,000 years. Um, June 3 marks the momentous victory to overturn that precedent in the High Court and honours the legacy of the man behind it, Eddie Marbo, which obviously is where the name for Marbo Day comes from. So who was this absolute legend of man? Born June 29 in 1936 on the Torres Strait Island of Myrrh, known to English speakers as Murray Island. Uh, his mother died during childbirth, and so he was raised by his mother's brother. I don't know why it doesn't just say his uncle. Um, Benny Marbo, whose surname he adopted. Um, he settled in Townsville in Queensland in 1959 with his wife, Bonita. There's literally nothing else here about his early life. Uh, he was an activist for Torres Strait Islander community and co-founder of one of Australia's first black community schools. Um, his wife also co-founded the school and worked there as a teacher's aide in 74 while working as a gardener at the James Cook University. Marbo learned, um, learned from academics Noel Luce and Henry Reynolds that under Australian law, Myrrh was crown land under the Australian government, not by the Miriam people. Um, Marbo gave a speech about Myrrh's land inheritance system at a Lands of Right conference in 81, where fellow presenter Melbourne lawyer Barbara Hocking argued there should be a test case to claim lands rights in court. A year later, Marbo and four other Miriam people um, by the names of um, and I'm probably gonna mess these up, so I will apologize in advance. Um, Salilia Marpo, Sali, uh, James Rice, David Passy, and Sam Passy uh, took their legal claim of ownership uh, of the lands of Mer to the High Court. Uh, Mrs. Hocking wrote the original s uh, statement of claim in the case and appeared in the first Supreme Court and High Court actions. On June 3, 1992, um, literally only that long ago, uh, the High Court overturned the legal concept of terra nullius um, that the land claimed by white settlers belonged to no one. The court ruled in favour of the Miriam people by a majority of six to one vote. Um, sadly, Marbo did not live to see his victory, having died of cancer five months earlier, aged 55. Um, Mrs. Sali and Sam Parsi also passed away before the action was handed down. Um, the Marbo decision acknowledged the traditional rights of Indigenous people to their land and waters and paved the way for native title in Australia. He also recognised that Indigenous people occupied Australia for tens of thousands of years before the British arrived in 1788. Um, 
The Australian government passed the Native Title Act in 93 after 51 hours and 49 minutes of debate in the Senate, the longest ever debate at the time. Uh, the law set out the uh, framework for Indigenous people to claim Native Title on Crown land, but many see uh, Native Title as an imperfect system which has brought uh, heartache to many First Nations people because the onerous conditions required to prove it can make it difficult to obtain. Um, the Maui decision was hailed as a momentous victory for Indigenous rights, however the mining and pastoral sectors were concerned about its implications. The Queensland government tried to circumvent the outcome by passing the Queensland Coast Islands uh, Declaratory Act in uh, 85 which retrospectively abolished the islanders' claims to Mur. The High Court overturned the law in uh, 88 because it was inconsistent with the Racial Discrimination Act. After the 92 ruling, then Victorian Premier Jeff Kennett fueled dissent by incorrectly claiming Australian household backyards would be under threat from native title claims. State governments called for the ruling to be overturned after a series of land claims were lodged from around the country, including several targeting capital cities. When the Native Title Act passed, it included several conditions that restricted Indigenous peoples' abilities to claim Native Title, that included not allowing uh, claims on Crown land that is covered by uh, pastoral lease or other interests that are deemed by law to prevail over native title. Um, so that's the end of the article, but obviously quite a large step um, and it obviously took pretty much the greater part of the 20th century to actually go through um, I mean, 55 years. is heck of a long time bordering on bordering on 56 years um, because that is I mean that's, that's his lifespan when was his first He first went to so it took a decade, it took ten years. Um, but for the greater part of the twentieth century he he was doing change and being an activist and just a general top bloke um so yeah um potentially today uh june 3rd is a date that we could look at if we if we see if we're still going with the idea of trying to find a new Australia Day um, because obviously we need something to celebrate even if the January 26 stays as a commemoration um, and yes I bring this old debate up again I know I made a video about it in January but um, it is it is something that needs addressing because um, by celebrating that date, there is some inherent racism in that, um, even if we don't mean it to be. Um, so maybe Marbo Day is an option for that. Um, obviously, there were other ones like, I mean, New Year's Day. 
actually is one of the potential dates because um, people were looking at, at like the date for like Federation stuff, but I, I think there's a very strong case to be made for Marbo Day. Um, I mean, we can't, it's not a date where we can you know, go to the beach exactly. Um, not everyone's in a, in a barbecuing mood because it's the middle of winter um, in, the, in the Southern Hemisphere, but I, if, if we're looking at celebrating Australia, the date that was first acknowledged that there were people here before Europeans settled um, and colonized the continent, um, that seems like a pretty good, pretty inclusive um, date to me, at least. Um, but let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the notification bell as well if you want to be notified when I upload new content. Um, I will also leave I mean, I read it all, but if you want to read it again yourself, um, and you do a little bit more digging into it, and you just want the facts there in front of you so you know that you're searching the right things, I will leave the link in the description below. And until next time, guys, keep your head screwed on.